This is the second video for section 3.2 on using check digits. In this lecture, I'll be talking about detecting errors. In the previous lecture, we talked about what a check digit is. And what we said was that in many ID number systems, we've got an extra digit or, or sometimes more than one digit that are reserved for checking whether the number is valid or invalid. And this check digit is not really part of the ID number itself, but it needs to be there so that we can do the checking for validity. Specifically, we talked about a check digit system for US Postal Service money orders. So remember that each ID number system has really two parts. There's a format, which just talks about the general structure of what the ID number has to look like. In this case, a Postal Service serial number is 11 digits long, and that includes a check digit. And then more complicated is the validation process, which is some calculation, some computation that we do to check whether the number is actually valid. In this case, for a Postal Service money order, we add up all of the digits except the check digit. We divide that total by nine and find the remainder. And last time we also learned how to do that on our calculators. And then that remainder should equal the check digit. So there's really three things that we wanna be able to do with the check digit system. We wanna determine whether a given ID number is valid or invalid. We wanna be able to create a new ID number that has a correct check digit. And we also wanna be able to detect and even maybe correct errors that might occur. So the first one on that list was actually validating an ID number. In other words, checking to see if a given ID number is valid or invalid. So we check to make sure that the format is correct. And then we perform whatever calculation we're supposed to do and make sure that the result matches what it's supposed to be. And we worked through a couple examples of that in the previous lecture. So if you want a refresher on that, go back and watch the previous lecture again. The second thing on our list of things that we want to do with the check digit system is to be able to create a new ID number. So when we have an ID number, but we don't have a check digit, all we need to do is perform that check digit calculation. And then the result of that calculation is gonna tell us what the check digit has to be. So here's an example. So we've got a serial number for a postal service money order that we want, and we have the first 10 digits. Remember, those are the digits that actually identify the serial number. But what we don't know is what the check digit should be. So that empty box there is representing the fact that we don't know what that 11th check digit should actually be. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the calculation. We're gonna say, okay, the process tells me to add up these first 10 digits, and then we're gonna divide by nine, and then whatever the remainder ends up being, that remainder is what ends up going in that spot for the check digit. So that's all we have to do. So I'm gonna add up these digits, six plus eight plus nine plus one plus three plus zero plus five plus nine plus one plus five, I add all those up. I've got my calculator here, I added all those up and I get 47. And then the next step would be to take 47 and divide it by nine. And when I take 47 divided by nine on my calculator, I get 5.22222. Now remember what we do is we, is we look at that and we say, all right, that means that 47 is five groups of nine with some left over. So we take five groups of nine, five times nine on my calculator is 45. 45 is almost 47, but not quite. So 47 minus 45 is gonna give us our remainder, which is two. So two should be the check digit that we get up here in our little empty box. So that should be the number that makes this entire 11 digit serial number valid. Okay, now sometimes the process is a little bit different. Sometimes in a different ID number system, the actual check digit calculation would include the check digit. Let's just look at a quick example of how that might work out differently. So let's say we have a, an ID number system that has a format of a six digit ID number, including the check digit. And the validation process is that the sum of all six digits, including the check digit, should equal 20. So this is different from the serial number system in the sense that the calculation includes the check digit. So what that means is that in order for us to validate and figure out what the check digit should be here, we need to think about the check digit as being an unknown quantity. So what our process would say is we sum all six digits. So four plus one plus zero plus eight plus one plus some unknown number. I don't know what that is, but I know that that should equal 20. So four plus one plus zero plus eight plus one, that's 14. So 14 plus question mark equals 20. And so that means that the question mark is gonna to have to equal six. So a little bit of algebra there. If you wanna call it X, you can, if you're comfortable with that, but otherwise just leave it as an unknown. So that means that the check digit that I want here that makes this all work out is six. All right, so the third thing on our list of things that we want to be able to do with an ID number system is to detect and possibly even correct errors. 
So let's start with a valid money order serial number. So here, again, if you want a little practice problem, that is a valid serial number. So you can do the process and, and check that if you want another practice problem. But let's say that we do a substitution error. We cause a substitution error, and let's see if our system detects it. So remember, to detect an error, what we'll have to do is run the validation process on this serial number. And what now we're hoping for is that this number will come back as invalid. If that happens, that means that we detected the error because we saw that the erroneous serial number was actually not valid. Okay, so what's our validation process? So we're gonna take this calculation, four plus five plus nine plus one plus zero plus four plus five plus eight plus three plus nine. Remember that for the serial numbers, we just add up the first 10 digits. We don't include the six in this calculation. So we add all those up. And when I add all that up, I get 48. On my calculator, I take 48 divided by nine. That's gonna give me 5.33333. That means that 48 is five groups of nine plus some leftovers. So I'm gonna take five groups of nine, figure out what that is on my calculator. That works out to be 45. And then I take that 45 and subtract it from my original total. That tells me that my remainder is three. But my check digit is six. So the fact that these don't match, that means that we detected, well, it means two things. It means this new serial number is not valid. But that means that we detected the error because we were able to find that the new, we know it's wrong because we know the original number. But if somebody were to, again, report this as the serial number, right? They're calling customer service or something like that they would be able to detect that, no, that's not, that can't be the right serial number because there's something wrong with it. And that means that we detected the error. Okay. So just to summarize, since the calculated check digit didn't match the actual check digit, the actual check digit in the number we were looking at was six, but we calculated that it should have been three. We know that something's wrong. We detected the error. So there was a substitution error and we detected it. So can this check digit system detect all possible substitution errors? Or are there some substitution errors that we won't be able to catch? Let's try another example. So again, we're gonna start with the same valid serial number, but again, we're causing a substitution error. And what we wanna see is, do we detect it? Do we catch this error? So we're gonna validate. We're gonna do the same validation process. Four plus five plus zero plus one plus zero plus seven plus five plus eight, plus three, plus nine. So we add all that up. We do that, we get 42. And again, we're looking for the remainder when 42 is divided by nine. So we take 42 divided by nine on my calculator. 42 divided by nine is gonna be 4.66666. So that means 42 is four groups of nine with some leftovers. So four groups of nine in my calculator is 36. Subtract that from my original total that's gonna give me six. So that means that the check digit should be six and the check digit is six. So that means two things. So this matches, so this means two things. One, it means that this new ID number is valid, which means we didn't detect the error. As far as we know, this new number that we're looking at is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Even though, because we know the original number, we know that there is something wrong. In fact, I colored that zero in red there to show you what was going on. But our system didn't detect it. So we didn't detect the error using the checking process. Because again, we don't always know the original number. All we know, we have to put ourselves in the shoes of the person on the other side of the customer service line. All they know is what they're being given. So if we're, all we're being given is this new ID number, we have no way of knowing something's wrong with it. Like, so again, just to kind of wrap this up to help you understand how this works. The new ID number is valid, which means the error we caused was not detected. And in fact, with this system for postal service money orders, so anytime we replace a zero with a nine or vice versa, that error is not gonna be able to be detected. The remainder system, the way this works, zeros and nines, if we swap those out, we're not gonna be able to catch those errors. 
But the good news is that any other single digit substitution error will be detected. Any other way of taking one single digit and replacing it with a different digit, we will catch with this system. What about transposition errors? We talked in a previous lecture about how that's another common type of error. So again, we're going to start with the same valid serial number, and we're going to cause this time a transposition error. So remember, that means that two adjacent digits get their uh, positions swapped. Is this error detected? So remember, to try to detect an error, we're going to run the validation computation and compare the result to what it's supposed to be. So in this case, that means we add up the first 10 digits, 4 plus 5 plus 9, plus 1 plus 0 plus 7, plus 8 plus 5 plus 3 plus 9. Remember, this is the one that I'm checking because this is the one that I was given. I add all that up, and I get 51. Now I'm looking for the remainder when 51 is divided by 9. So I take 51 divided by 9 on my calculator, 51 divided by 9, and I get 5.66666. And now what that means is that 51 is 5 groups of 9 plus some leftovers. 5 groups of 9 is 45. I take 45 and subtract it from my original total. That's going to give me 6, which means the check digit should be 6. And I look and I see the check digit is 6. So that means these match which mean, again means two things. The first thing it means is that this new ID number is valid. And the second thing that means is that the error was not detected. In order to detect the error, we have to be able to show that the new number that we found was not valid. So again, the transposition error was not detected because changing the order of the digits doesn't change their sum, right? Remember, all we're doing with these numbers is adding them all up. So if we change the order, that's not going to change the total, and so that's not going to be able to be caught by this system. We're going to have to look at a different kind of check digit system if we're going to hope to detect transposition, jump transposition, any kind of errors that change the order of the digits. What about correcting errors? So earlier we found that this right here was not a valid ID number. When we ran our checking system, we found that the ID that the check digit didn't match. And that's because we caused a substitution error. But if we didn't know the original ID number, we would have no way of knowing what exact error occurred. We wouldn't necessarily know what was wrong. We would just know that something is wrong. And so there wouldn't be any way of recovering the original ID number. The bad digit or whatever's causing the problem really could be anywhere as far as we know. But what if we had in more information? So let's, here's another serial number. And let's say that we knew that the third digit was wrong. So let's say maybe we're looking at a physical money order and it kind of looks like a, this third digit kind of looks like a five, but maybe it's smudged or damaged or something like that. And, and when we show that it's not valid, maybe we can see that something's wrong there. Would we be able to find the original ID number? Well, if that third digit is wrong, if that's what we know, well then, the fact that it's currently a 5 is kind of irrelevant. We know that it really shouldn't be a 5. So we can just smudge it out and just replace it with a question mark. So my calculation for validity should be 1 plus 3 plus question mark plus 9 plus 8 plus 7 plus 1 plus 2 plus 6 plus 5. When I add those up, well, I can't add the question mark because I don't know what that is, but I can add up everything else. And that's going to give me 42. So 42 plus something, and the check digit needs to be an 8. So what I want is for this number, once I add the correct question mark, I want there to be a remainder of 8. Well, let's leave off the question mark for a second. What's the remainder right now? 42 divided by 9, on my calculator, 42 divided by 9 is going to be 4.6666. And that's going to mean that 42 is 4 groups of 9, which is 36, plus some leftovers. So when I subtract, I get 42 minus 36, which is 6. So without the question mark, the remainder is 6. There's 6 left over. I want there to be 8 left over. I want the remainder to be 8. Right now I have 6 left over. I want there to be 8 left over. So how much more do I have to add? Well, hopefully you can see that the number that I have to add here is 2. If I add 2 more, then this 42 becomes a 44. And then when I subtract 44 minus 36, that's going to give me the remainder of 8 which is what I want. So that's a little bit of a strange variation on our problem, but it gives you an insight a little bit into how we might be able to use some additional information to not only detect that there is an error, but show that we can sometimes correct those errors.
So looking ahead, in some situations, we are going to be able to do this error correction. And in our example, we needed a key piece of information, which was where the error was, which digit was wrong. And later on in this unit, we're actually going to study ways to correct errors, even if we don't have that additional information.